scripture. And I've already marked both of you here today. So uh, I think I sort of made this announcement earlier, but I don't think uh, Josh was here yet. So in case you happen to be driving by Montevallo, University of Montevallo this afternoon around 4, which I doubt if you will be, uh, our volleyball team is playing a match there. So, uh, and then Friday, if you happen to be up near Boaz, they're having a tournament there. Okay. Um, Saturday, they'll be in a tournament down at Wadley, Alabama, at Southern Union Tournament. Sneed Snake is the one tomorrow, in Bo I mean Friday in Boaz. And I'll give you the rest of those on Monday, <coughs> or another one or two. All right. Now, I was trying to recall, and the old gray cells are completely confused now. Um, we had already, since all three of the students here in this class had already heard everything about uh, the research paper and my locator card, we I didn't go over that again, but y'all were doing other things, so I... We didn't have a chance to do the syllabus. So let's do that quickly. And again, this isn't current. It's not even, well, most of the stuff is perfectly fine. It's only the stuff that's specific to the, to the course. Uh, that's the part that's, that's not current. It is Math 238, Applied Differential Equations, Black Software and Blackboard Supported Course, not very much of either one. Uh, at three credit hour course, we meet now rather than Tuesday and Thursday, we're Monday and Wednesday. 2.30 to 3.45, okay? 2.30, 3.45, Monday, Wednesday. But we're in the right campus in the right room. At least something's good here. My name's still the same. My office on this campus is still the same. Everything we saw from before is still the same. Uh, remember, that's the number for the secretary on the Birmingham campus. I have another number there. I think it works 6409. That's actually in my office there, but it's not my phone number. Okay, that's whoever uses the office Monday through Thursday. It's her fault. Okay, office hours, again, I'll go over those because they may have changed since we went over them yesterday. On Mondays and Wednesdays, I'm available from 8 to 10. Okay, at 10 o'clock, I've got Cal 2. And then uh, at 12.15, I've got Cal 3. And then we have this little half hour or so uh, between Cal 3 at, at uh, 1.55 till 2.30. So that's another little block. And on Mondays, then when this class is over from 3.45 until 6. Okay. Those are office hours on Monday. Tuesday. Okay. Only 8 to 8.30 because my, my pre-calculus output class did make big time. Uh, however, they canceled the trade class. So from... 9.45 until 11.30. That's my only office hours on Tuesday and Thursday. Okay, because at 11.30 I've got a uh, linear algebra class and at 1.15 I've got a physical science class that goes until 5.45 because it's a mini term class with a lab. So it's the rest of the afternoon. Wednesday, same as Monday in the morning, 8 to 10, but then that's it, okay, because once this class is over with, uh, except for that 30 minutes, you know, right before this class, uh, in between the two classes, y'all know where I am and stuff like that, uh, that will be my other office hours here, because as soon as this class is over with, I've got to book it to the Birmingham East Campus for a uh, business class. Thursday, I already did, and Friday, Saturday, is right in Birmingham. All right, now this is the new part. Uh, the course description. Let me get that to the top if I can. Okay. This is an introduction to numerical methods, qualitative behavior, uh, first order differential equations, techniques for solving separable and linear equations analytically, and applications to various models, so we'll do this a little bit in 1.3, populations, uh, motion, chemical mixtures, that kind of stuff. Uh, techniques for solving higher order uh, linear differential equations, 
with cost of coefficients, that's the general theory, then we will do undetermined coefficients and some reduction of order. Um, and if we get it that far, variation of parameters, with emphasis on interpreting the behavior of the solutions and applications to physical models whose governing equations are of higher order. The Laplace transform is a tool for a solution of the initial value problems whose inhomogeneous terms are discontinuous. What in the world does all that mean? <laughs> okay. Blah, blah, blah. Okay. We probably aren't going to get the Laplace transform. If we do, this will be the first time that y'all are start groups, so we may get there. Prerequisite should be uh, Matthew 27, but you uh, are doing it as a prerequisite, so that will be fine. Textbook and other learning materials. Um, here it is. It's uh, it's a Cengage book, by the way, so you can, if you're on Cengage, you can get this one too with no additional cost. If you're on that Cengage Unlimited, um, and uh, it's first course, eleventh uh, edition. Where is it? There it is, eleventh edition. Um, the Zill, Dennis Z, Zill is the author. It's a 2018 text that so may be good for another year or two. Uh, graphing calculator is not necessarily needed. Might You might find it handy for some of the solutions. Uh, paper, certainly. Graph paper, pencils. Uh, you can use ink if you want to, but I'll confess, when I do differential equations, I tend to make errors, so I like to use a pencil. So. It's up to you. That's completely up to you. And then here's the whole blurb about Cengage Unlimited again. I don't like having to advertise for them, but they make us put this in here. So I won't go into all this again unless you have questions about it. I'll try to answer those, but I'll just scroll through it if that's okay. Okay. More advertising. More. And these are starting our courses that offer that that use Cengage text. Okay. And then these are the various plans they have. Okay. And uh, so on and so forth. Here's where we get back into our real uh, syllabus again. So I think I'll scroll this to the top. Oops, went too far. Whoops. Far enough. I'll get there in a minute. There we go. All right. And I think I went through the same spiel with you before. Now that I think about it, I won't go again. Professional competencies, these are new. These are specific for this course. And let's see if I can get a little more on this page because you've heard all the thing about Blackboard. Okay, we're not going to get everything on it, but we'll get started. All right, students will be able to, will find solutions to first order differential equations, including separable variables, linear first order equations, and applications of various models. That's pretty much chapters one and two, but we're going to do them separately. Chapter one really is the way they do books these days, a lot of authors, and this one does too, is they go through a lot of trying to get you to see what's happening before they ever tell you how to do what's happening, okay? And so we're, chapter one is, is looking at what differential equations are doing, and they'll give you a solution, say verify it is a solution, that kind of stuff. In chapter two, you actually will find solutions. So we're gonna have to wait a while to get there, okay? But then the second one here, students will solve linear equations of higher order, including equations of constant coefficients and undetermined coefficients. Number three, students will use Laplace transform methods if we get that far to solve initial value problems and discontinuous functions. And we will use numerical methods to approximate solutions. We'll do some of that in the earlier chapters. We won't get into the detail of the later chapters unless we really move along. And students will research and write on the topic of differential equations. So guess what? You got another paper. Yes. Excited, aren't you? All right. And here's how we measure this. Um, at one time, I tried to do chapters one and two together. That just covered an awful lot of material, and students had trouble uh, hanging on to it all, so I started breaking it down. 
So again, the chapter one is basically an introduction to differential equations, sort of giving you a feel for them, what they're doing, how they do it, and then finally we go about solving first order differential equations. But even then, at the first of the chapter, they have a section to try to get you to feel good about them, and then finally they start telling you how to solve them. Okay? Then they race through that. Chapter four then is linear equations of higher order, and that's where we get to the uh, uh, constant coefficients and techniques for solving those, and uh, variation of parameters, that kind of stuff. If we get there, we'll go then to chapter seven, which is Laplace transform, uh, methods, and we'll do some numerical methods back here in one and two. I uh, doubt if we'll get to the advanced numerical methods in chapter nine. And the writing competency is the research paper. Now, how will we evaluate this? The research paper is required, just like in your other class, cannot be dropped, just like your other class. Chapter tests will be given at the end of each chapter, especially chapters one, chapter two, and chapter four. If we get further, then we'll go on further, okay? Uh, the lowest chapter test score may be dropped, but not the last. Whatever the last chapter we get to, that paper, that test will not be dropped. Because that, I have to count as a final exam, and I have to hang on to those for three years or something like that. I'm going to be here three years, but they want to see. Okay. All right. So, uh, and then you know how the grading goes. That was exactly like before. Okay. And attendance, just like before. Try to be here for all classes. Um, if you can't be here, I will record. One big difference between Cal 3 and this one, this book does, has zero PowerPoints. None. Nada. Okay? So everything I do will be scratched out on the, on the board, on the uh, white pad here, and it will show up there. And my writing is terrible. Okay? Especially with ionizing pens, right? You've seen it. Okay? Yeah. Have you ever seen how you sign out at Home Depot? Does that look at all like your cylinder <laughs> signature? Yeah, and you probably do much bit neater than me. <laughs> all right. Uh, yeah, we talked about withdrawal and all that stuff, you know, how that's, to me, a lot better than a D or an L, uh, because D's and L's in this course are not going to transfer back. So, uh, But I don't think that will pertain to either one of you. Make up work is sort of hard. Okay, I do need to ask you this. Would you prefer take home test or in class test? Yeah, better go to take home because I tell you what, these tests take a while to do. Exactly. And maybe one. Okay. <laughs> well, some students have said, boy, I worked on this one for days. You know, it's, they're not that bad. That's just because I should have had problems with it. Okay. So, what does makeup work mean when you take home test? I don't know. Just if you miss the day that we, I give you the test, show up the next day so you can get the test. Okay. Now try to have the test in before I give the next test out. Okay. I say try to get it in within a week. That's fine. If you need more time, that's fine. But just get it back to me before I give the next test out. Okay. So we'll leave that alone. Lateness policy, I'm going to try to be on time today. I was six minutes late. Sorry about that because I went to the hallway, which I should never do because I get stopped. Okay. And then you've heard about academic integrity. Have it. Plagiarism, don't do it. Cheating, don't do it. Okay. Uh, you've heard all this. Professional de decorum, have it. Whatever it is, you know, whatever. Okay. You've heard all that. Course concerns, if you have a problem with me, Bring it up with me. Let's see if we can work it out. If not, we'll go to the department chair. Oops, that's me. And then we'll, we'll go to the station. Huh? We'll put it on your superior's desk. Huh? We'll put it on your superior's desk. For right. You. right. And, but then, yeah, <laughs> it goes on up. So uh, we'll work it out. And you've heard about state murder, discrimination, harassment. I count bullying here, too. So you've heard all that. Uh, Americans with disability, you've heard that. I actually had a pretty major case yesterday. That's why the room's a little differently arranged now. Uh, the student that sits right there in my afternoon class is pretty severe hearing loss, I take it, or something, because she has like a court stenographer recording everything in the class for her. That's why this chair is now here and that desk is turned strangely, so she can do that. Okay. So we do whatever it takes. Okay. 
Uh, college calendar, this of course is last summer, and the everything else, the dates have changed, but most of this is pretty much the same. Rather than Memorial Day, we have Labor Day. Uh, rather than Independence Day, we have the Veterans Day and Day. But you know, I'll get all this corrected. Uh, the main thing is little past midterm is 60% 60, 60 completion date for Title IV funds. That means if you're on any type of federal financial aid, uh, if you withdraw before this, you have to pay it back. If you wait until after this, you don't have to pay it back. Uh, just keep that in mind. Okay. Now, this is your student acknowledgement page. Once I get the syllabus corrected, and out there on Blackboard, and then if you'll either type your name here and date and email me that, or print it from your uh, computer and uh, and sign it and turn it in to me, date it and turn it in. Any questions on the syllabus then? Okay, pretty straightforward. All right, so I'll go on and close this out. And we talked about <coughs> safety in the other. Okay, everything else is the same. Okay, let's see. Yeah, this is what I'm keeping. This is what I'm losing. I'll worry about that later. So let's go to current slide. And I am recording. So now, differential equations. You've already done some differential equations. In my first class today in Cal 2, we did a differential equation. Uh, more than we'll do in here until we get through all this fuzzy, good, warm, and fuzzy stuff. Okay? Uh, first chapter here is Introduction to Differential Equations. And since there are no PowerPoints, I'll read parts of this because not everybody may have a book and uh, I'll write the parts I think might be super important uh, but then we'll work the problems as they give them to us. So what would you call that? What is that asking for? That's a derivative. So this thing could be some function of x because it's one variable here, some function of x. Now, what if I said write that in differential form? How is derivative form different from differential form? That's differential form. You break the derivative into a dy and a dx on the other side. Now, even though it may look like we multiply both sides of the equation by dx, we didn't, did we? No. Okay. Because that's not a quotient there. That is an operator, dy dx. But in differential form, it looks just like you multiply by dx. So it's not a bad thing way to think about it, but don't ever say that to a pure mathematician. You'll send them viral. Okay, so anyway. Okay. So that is a derivative. Okay. There needs to, I mean, this is a differential equation, either written this way or this way. In fact, we'll be doing both. Most of the time, at least to begin with, we'll be doing them in this form. Okay. That's a differential equation. It has a derivative, an equal sign, and a function. That makes it a differential equation. Now, that means you expect to find some y is equal to, now, uh, because we've already used the f here to be the answer to this, we'll say y is some phi of x. We hope that's going to be some function that solves that differential equation. Okay? Now. That's a what now? I'm sorry. Second. To some function, and that function, that's the Greek symbol, phi. Oh, okay. Yeah, okay. It, you might have always pronounced it phi, but they pronounce it phi. Or pho thumb, I don't care, you know, never mind, okay. <laughs> so, uh, but that's the Greek symbol, phi. Okay. And that, we're looking for that. When you have a differential equation, we're saying, 
what function L, what function what function Y satisfies that differential equation. If you find it, then you have the answer to it. So that's what we're approaching. Okay? Now, if you were then to take the derivative of this, dy dx would then be phi prime of x, right? Take the derivative of it as that. And if this phi prime is equal to x, you have solved the differential equation. Okay? Now, this is what they're going to do for a while now. Okay, I think I'm going to erase this just because I believe we'll need a little more room for what comes later. All right, to erase? Okay. Here is a function. Y is equal to, and this just seems so backward to me, but this is how they approach it. It's equal to E to the 0 0.1 x squared. Okay? Now that function, you can differentiate anywhere on the interval minus infinity to infinity. Exponential functions are defined everywhere, and they're smooth and continuous everywhere, so therefore you can take a derivative everywhere. Okay? Now, let's do it. What is dy dx? This is going back to Cal 1, right? What would it be? The derivative of the exponent is itself, right? So that would be e to the 0 0.1 x squared. But then you've got the good old chain rule, okay? And take the derivative of the inner function. What's the derivative of that? This part right up here. Two times 0 0.01 is 0 0.02 times x. There you have it. You've just created a differential equation of a sort. Okay? But what I want you to notice here is that this part right here is indeed your y. So you could say this is dy dx is equal to 0.2x times y, right? That's a differential equation, okay? And that is usually where we're going to start. It's going to take us a while to get there, but that's where we're going to start, and we're going to see if we can figure out how to get this answer out of that differential equation. We know it's right because we just did it, but how do you know that if they didn't give you the answer first? And that's the key. For this chapter, chapter 1, they're always going to give you the answer and have you verify it. But then after a while, we'll see how you come up with those. That'll be chapter 2 and following. Okay. Now, here is a definition. An equation that looks like this, and they call this for a while now uh, equation one. The equation that we made up in it is, is called a differential equation. Before proceeding, let's consider a more precise definition of that concept. I'm not sure I can get it all in the bottom of the slide, so I think I'm going to clear the slide to write it. And my writing is terrible. I abbreviate like crazy. So follow along as you can. This is definition 1.1.1, .1 okay? An equation, that's an equation, EQ, I'll put EQ in, maybe that'll be a little better, containing the derivatives uh, that's really ugly writing of one or more unknown functions
functions is f and s, okay? Or dependent variables. Why is my pen not writing? It's still not writing. It's not showing up there either, is it? Why does it do this? It's just quit writing. It would do this in a class that there is no PowerPoint. All right. Sometimes this works. The computer just gets lost somewhere. Okay, I can't think of anything to do with it. <laughs> and there's a line across the page. So maybe it's going right again. But I'm not getting my... No? It's not responding to anything. Let's try it again. Sorry about this, folks. Usually the task manager will... I'm not looking for anything. I'm just. What's that? Where, where do you see that? Oh, I see it. Okay. All right. Well, at least I've got ah, some things are back now. I thought they were. Well, here, I'll do this. If I have to write with my mouse, y'all are in really sad shape. Okay? <laughs> really sad shape. But the mouse is working. Let's see if I can get the pen. No, the pen's not. Okay. No, it's, it's part of it's. It's done this before, not at all recently, but it's just not responding at all to that. So let me just read it to you. I don't know. Y'all don't have books. But an equation involving uh, a derivative, derivatives, okay, of one or more unknown functions or dependent variables, okay, just like we did before y could be some phi of x. y is a dependent variable, phi of x is the unknown function. Okay? So that's why they said depend, uh, unknown functions are dependent variables. With respect to one or more independent functions, that was our x in the first example, that's said to be a differential equation, and from now on, whenever I can, I will express that as a DE, a differential equation. Okay, and I cannot write any longer on this. Now, here's the other thing I may try. Let me get out of this. It's not even responding to that. There we go, it did. Okay, let me bring it back up again and see if maybe it shows up this time. All right. Hey, look at that. It came back. I should have done that to begin with. You want me to write that down again? An equation, okay, containing, that's containing, the derivatives, that's derivatives, by the way, of one or more, I'm going to put one plus, one or more, unknown functions, that's functions, or dependent variables, I can't write,
that's variables, with respect to one or more independent variables, WRT is with respect to one or more independent variables, there's variables again, is said to be a differential equation. DE, differential equation. That's going to be my abbreviation. Now, we're going to do a little bit of classification and nomenclature. This is pretty easy stuff, but it's stuff you need to know. Sort of easy to get them confused, but start getting them down. We're going to classify according to type, order, and linearity. Now, basically the type, there are two types. We're only going to deal with one, but I'll give you both of the types. You have ODEs, that's ordinary differential equations, and you have PDEs. Those are called partial differential equations. We're only going to mess with ordinary differential equations. There will be times when we will take partial derivatives, but we're not going to be solving partial differential equations. Okay? Now, y'all are both in Cal 3. All three of you are in Cal 3. We haven't done partial derivatives yet, have we? Have you done them in any other courses? Okay. So don't worry about it. When we get to them where we will be using, I'll tell you the rules for it. And maybe by that time, we'll already have hit it in Cal 3. So we'll see who comes first. So these are the two different types, ordinary and partial. We're only going to work with ordinary. But we'll show you some partials and let you know the difference. Okay. Now, second is order. Okay. Oh, wait. They're going to do example one just with the types. So we will now do the types. Can I erase this? All right. Or not? Okay. Here are some differential equations. Now I can't read. That's like Y. Okay, that's an ordinary differential equation. Why? That's a regular derivative. The d, that's what gives it away. dy by dx. Now, I can't remember if Bill's heard this before. I probably you haven't. I've tutored uh, a friend of ours, kids, uh, are, they're Indians, and I don't know if you've met many Indians, but they can talk really fast, okay? And when I was tutoring him, he was taking his, his courses in India at a university there, but he was coming home every now and then, and then would get me to tutor him. And when he was doing his calculus course, whereas I say dy dx, is that pretty much what you call it? He did d by dx. <laughs> d by dx, that's what without the y in there, dbdx, okay? And for a while I said, wait, wait, what are you saying? <laughs> and I found out, this is dy dbx, okay, or something like that. So anyway, that's an ordinary differential equation. Now I will give you, right now, even though we haven't gotten there yet, this is first order because that's a first derivative. And it's linear because the independent, no, the dependent variable, the derivative and the variable here are all to the first power. Okay? So this, I'm going to show you all of them. It's an ordinary differential equation. It's a linear, uh, it's a first order differential equation, and it's a linear differential equation. Now, we haven't gotten to the other two yet, but while I had it up here, I was going to go on and say that. Here's another. D2y dx squared minus dy dx plus 6y 
is equal to zero. Okay? Again, these are D's and D's. So this is an ordinary differential equation. Really easy to distinguish ordinary from partial. Okay? What's different about this one? Second order. It's a second derivative. So the order is two. Now, it's also linear because this is to the first power. Second derivative, but to the first power. Meaning it's not squared. You know, it's not a deep two d squared. I've just never seen the derivative. Oh, really? Really? How about if I wrote it like this? Yes. Okay, so that's all that is. All right, that's a six y. Yeah. Okay. Now, but you have seen this one, right? Oh, yes. yes. Okay, well, what is the second derivative? You're doing the derivative of dy dx by dx, right? Well, look at that. That's a d2y dx squared. Why do you put the d2y and not d2x? Well, because you're taking the derivative of this function. So this is the derivative of this function. This is the derivative of y. This is the derivative of the derivative of y. So it's d2y dx squared. Okay. Yeah, it's just another way. This is called the Leibniz notation. This is called the prime notation. And it sounds like you did Leibniz to the first order, but not to the second. Yeah, okay. So that's also, it's a ordinary differential equation because those are d's. It's a, it's a uh, second order ordinary differential equation because the maximum derivative is the second derivative, but none of your y terms or derivatives or anything else is raised to any other power except one. Okay? So, it's a linear. All right. Now, here's one. dx dt plus dy dt is equal to 2x plus y. Okay, it's obviously a differential equation because it's got derivatives in it. Ordinary because these are d's here. Now I haven't shown you what the partials look like, but these are d's, so it's ordinary. First order because both of these are first derivatives. Okay? What the difference here is, is that you have two dependent variables. Now remember our equation said you could have more than one dependent variable, only one independent variable. Now if you ever have more than one independent variable, you're probably getting into partial derivatives. Ordinary derivatives have to have only one independent variable, and that's your t, the x and y. And again, this will be linear, because none of the x's or y's are derivatives or raised to any power uh, in first order. Okay. I'm getting them all in now. Okay. Now, those are all ordinary. I've got to sneeze. I apologize ahead of time. Yeah! Y'all awake yet? Okay, good. All right. I have to do it every now and then. I had a physics professor when I was a uh, sophomore. Uh, in college, and uh, of course physics books are always big and huge. Had them at 8 o'clock in the morning, and it was Professor Ewald, nice old man, but he had the worst monotone I think I've ever heard. Never changed volume, never changed cadence, never changed anything. And he would be droning on. He was a good teacher, he did, except he never changed. And he'd stand behind this thing, big lecture room, about 200 people or something in it. And every now and then, he would take his book, big old, big, heavy physics book, and hold it as high as he could and just drop it onto the uh, desk in front. I'm the end, you saw uh, all these uh, heads popping up. And then he'd say, sometimes I find it necessary to demonstrate the law of gravity. Yeah. Maybe you should put some emphasis in your voice. Yeah, but he was too old to change, you know, so, but anyway, uh, 
how did I get into that? But anyway, uh, those were the ordinary differential equations. Here are your partials, and I think you'll see immediately a difference. I'm just having trouble reading the variables. Okay. Yes. Hey, uh, with my eyes like they are, I misread that. Okay, D to you. These are not D's. These are partials. Partial Y squared. You thought I just was sloppy, huh? Okay, I got it. Okay. No, no. These are partial. Is that zero or is that... That's equal to zero. Oh, yeah, that's right, yeah. I slash my zeros. That's an old habit from the Navy. When you're keeping logs, you have to distinguish zeros from O's. So I'm just used to doing that. But it's also looks just like the phi in the Greek alphabet. So, yeah. But that's a zero this time. All right. Now, notice the difference here. The difference here is one independent... I mean, one dependent variable, U, but two... Independent variables. Now, if you've got two independent variables, you have to be taking partials. Okay? And these are partial derivatives. You take them just like you do ordinary uh, derivatives, except you only take it with respect to the variable in question here. So if you had this function u with some function of x's and y's, which it will be, okay, and you take the partial with respect to x, you only take the derivative with respect to x, and all the y's in there you treat as constants. So you just do whatever you do as if that was a constant, you know. And when you take the partial with respect to y, then you take the derivatives with respect to y, treating all the x's as if they were constants. So that's the only difference between partial derivatives. Okay? But this is a not an ordinary differential equation, this is a partial differential equation. So that's the type. Okay? Second order, okay. Because the maximum yes. unit derivative is two, <laughs> and I don't know how you talk about those as linear. We won't even get into that because we don't do those. Okay, uh, so don't sweat it. But they would be linear, but we're not going to do any of them. So don't get carried away. Here's another one. Partial the second partial with respect to u. I'm sorry, of u with respect to x. Squared. I'm trying to figure out if that's equal or minus sign. I think it's an equal second partial of u with respect to t squared minus 2 the partial of u with respect to t. Okay. That again, and this is so easy to see, if there are these crooked little Ds here, those are partials. Those slanty type Ds, those are partial derivatives, so that's a partial differential equation. Second order, and of course linear again, because none of those Us or derivatives of Us are raised to any powers. Okay? They're second derivatives, but they're not raised to powers. Okay? And then here's another one, the partial of u with respect to y is equal to minus the partial of u with respect to x, okay? Again, a partial differential equation, also these silly looking little d's there, crooked little d's, but this is first order. Both of those are the first order, and uh, they're linear because I'm on the race in power. Okay, so that's the difference between the types of differential equations. The first ones, when they have these in them, those are ordinary differential equations. When they have these little symbols, those are partials. Okay, now, as 
you sort of brought up, and I mentioned, when you're using, especially for for ordinary differential equations, uh, all right, to erase this, okay. Uh, Throughout this text, ordinary differential equations will be written using either the Leibniz notation, which is, now these are ordinary, and I have to, it doesn't matter what I write, but I'm trying to do the same thing the book is. That's ordinary, dy dx, d2y, dx squared, d3y, dx cubed, and they don't have to be always x's and y, but those are the Leibniz notation. Am I spelling it right? No, it's L-E-I. I think that's how you spell it. No, no T in it. I've had so many students write papers on it and misspell it every way conceivable, and I'm having trouble remembering what is the correct way. Okay. Okay, it's L E I B N I Z, Leibniz. Okay. With my eyes doing crazy things to me, I'm making sure I have them. Those are Leibniz notation. The same thing can be written in prime notation Y prime, Y double prime, Y triple prime. Okay. Now, Leibniz notation can keep going forever. Uh, you just put the number of derivatives up there. When you go to the prime notation, that's as many as we go. We don't do any more ticks than three. So, so they call this prime notation. But when you go past three, then they do this. Y parentheses four. If you did put parentheses, that would mean it's fourth power. In parentheses, that means fourth derivative. Because if you start trying to do 15 primes there, you're going to lose count, and you're not going to be able to tell how many. You can see a 15 and know it's a 15. You can see a 1, a 2, and most of the time threes and tell that it's 1, 2, or 3. But they don't just keep adding more primes to it. So then they start putting them in parentheses. And they keep going after that. Okay? Now, I have to get the book further away. Okay. So if we go back to the ones we just did, which I really don't want to go because you probably are. Well, no, you have them written down. Okay? Uh, that first one we did was, would have been Y prime plus 5y is equal to e to the x, right? You write, tell me how to write the second one down. I think I did earlier. What was that? Uh, y double prime minus y prime plus 6y equals zero. Equals zero. Not phi, okay? And the next one? x prime plus y prime is that equal yeah plus y. right now most of the time just to keep you see here's a advantage of the prime notation is so much easier to write so simple disadvantage of it you don't know what the independent variable is. Except maybe in this one, it's obviously got to be the x. And this one, you can't tell. And this one is really confusing because there's no that can show up. There's more than two variables also. Yeah. And, but they can't, these are both dependent variables. Whatever you take a derivative of, that's a dependent variable. You can't tell what the independent variable is. Now, Way back, I don't know if, Bill, well, you're familiar with this, they used to use a dot notation for derivative with respect to time. Now, that came out of Isaac Newton. 
he did just about everything of his, a lot of his stuff, because he was talking about motion and stuff like this, and usually the variable, the independent variable, is time then. So he used this dot notation, and they started making fun of it and calling it the fly spec notation. You couldn't tell the difference between a dot and a fly spec. So uh, this could have been written in his notation, x dot plus y dot is equal to 2x plus y. That means with respect to time, whereas prime was respect to some other variable other than time. Like if you saw this, you just assume this is with respect to x. Because most of the time y is a function of x. But sometimes it's not. Okay, uh, and still in physics they'll use y or x or uh, x double prime, meaning second derivative of the other. Uh, again, I don't know how many dots you can put up there, <laughs> you know, and keep up with how many are there. But uh, how big's the paper? You know? What's that? How big's the paper? Yes, exactly. And how well can you discriminate with your eyes? Yeah. Okay. So anyway, those are the uh, different notations that you will sometimes see. This book will not use the dot notation, okay, at all. In fact, I think they make fun of it. I call it, yeah, yeah. In paragraph about the middle of page four, it says the dot notation, derogatorily referred to sometimes as fly spec notation, is sometimes used to denote derivatives with respect to time t. Okay. So, uh, but it's pretty common in physics, but it's. Uh, in math, they make fun of it. All right, now, let's go to the uh, partial derivatives, and I'll tell you another way to do that. Okay. All right, to erase. Now, we're not going to be doing much of this. We're not going to do any partial differential equations, but we will be taking partials. So. That's why I'm going to spend a little bit of time just showing you its notation. Okay, again, just to use the one that we used before, uh, second partial of u with respect to x squared. Was it plus or minus? I think it's a plus. Second partial of u with respect to uh, y squared is equal to zero. And that, if I'm not mistaken, or maybe it needs to be in three dimension, it's called the Laplace equation. Uh, it has a special meaning for people who do their kinds of things. Okay? Now here's another way you could write that. Write down the dependent variable, u, and then do an x, x. That means you're taking the partial with respect to u once by x, and then again by x. Plus u sub y y is equal to zero. So that's how you would do that in what they call subscript notation. So you have the Leibniz notation for ordinary partial derivatives, I mean ordinary derivatives, uh, and you could use the prime notation instead if you're using the Leibniz notation for partial derivatives or sort of a variation of the Leibniz notation you use subscript notation to to uh, replace it. Now, you use that when you do have uh, uh, eyes are hurting. Okay. Let's do that third equation in subscript notation. No, the second one. The second one. Okay, that was second partial of u with respect to x squared. Now that's not the x being squared, it's the partial of x squared. Okay, uh, and it's not really squared, but that's just the notation they use. Is equal second partial of u with respect to y squared. No. T squared, I can't read. Minus 2 times the partial of u with respect to t. 
how would you write that in subscript notation? Sub xx is equal to no u sub tt. Don't do that in class, okay? Minus two u sub t. Perfect. Okay. Now. Here's something else you might, we will run into at some point. Because you have two independent variables, you may take the partial with respect to u first time with respect to x, and the next time with respect to t. So when you're doing that, and this is getting a little beyond what the book is showing right now, but you see if you did this, the second partial of u, the first time you did it with respect to x, and the second time you did it with respect to t. Okay? Because this is basically the partial with respect to t of the partial of u with respect to x. Remember, that's how they got that notation. So you do this with respect to x first, with respect to t second. Okay. Like you actually do like du dt. Yeah, you do the partial of u with respect to x, and then take the partial of that with respect to t. Well, we don't know what partial for, right? Well, no, not quite. But okay, we'll get there. I'm sorry. Yeah. Well, this, this latter one, when you write that as u uh, sub tx. No, that's what I was just going to say. You write that as u sub x t that's really a little confusing but the thing is you take the partial with respect to x first and then take the partial of that with respect to t so you reverse them when you do the subscript notation don't sweat that you're not going to run into that in this course you'll run into it in cal 3 but you won't run into how it how do you know which one to take first well in which one this one uh, this one. one this is the one you take first or you take it this second but here, you take the one closest to it first, and then the one furthest away, you do second. So that's why you reverse it. It's sort of confusing. So on the top one, you take the far right one first. Yes. Right. Partial of x. Right. Before you took. Do the partial of respect to t. Right. Why would you do it that way? Huh? But you, we read left to right. Yeah, but you I mean, see, I'm fine with it's because this is what this stands for. Oh, okay. Yeah. It's the partial of u with respect the partial with respect to t of the partial of u with respect to x. Okay. Yeah. I get it. I get it. So this you do first. That's the inner function and the outer function. Inner partial. Don't sweat it now. But the good news, even when we get to it in Cal three, as long as you've got continuous functions, I believe that's all it takes. U of x t is always equal to u of t x. Or you verse of that. Because if you've got continuous functions, it doesn't matter the work. So it really doesn't matter, but technically that's what you're doing. So, uh, but you, you won't, whoops, that's not what I meant to do. Okay, that's not what, that's of no consequence in this course. I don't think, I can't remember, we need to know that. Okay, now. So that was all classification by type. And they're really simple. If they're D's, ordinary. If they're these squirrely little things, they're partials. We're not going to do any partial derivatives, but we will be taking partial derivatives. We won't be doing any partial differential equations, but we will be taking partial derivatives at a couple of places. So now let's do the order. And I've already introduced the order to you, so hopefully this won't be None of it's really complicated. The notation can be, but you know, the order of differential equation, either ordinary or partial, is the order of the highest derivative of the equation, as we've just said. So if this, if you have this, those are ordinary, uh, d2y dx squared plus 5 dy dx cubed, I 
think that's a three. I believe it is. Minus 4y. is equal to e to the x. Okay. Ordinary or partial? Ordinary, of course. Those are d's, not squirrely little things. Okay? Now, what order is it? Second, you're absolutely right. The maximum derivative is the second derivative. That first derivative we took there, we're cubing it. That knocks it out of being linear. It's linear, every one of those things with respect to y, derivatives or, or the function y itself, must be to only the first power. Okay. That makes it linear. Yeah. That one's to the third power, so that makes it nonlinear. We don't do any other classification itself, linear or nonlinear. So two of them are binary, okay? Ordinary or partial. That's the, the types. The order can be any number. First order, second order, third order, fourth order, 17th order, you know, whatever. No limit there. We're not going to do any 17th orders. Okay. Uh, <laughs> but linearity <coughs> is either yes or no. Binary. It's either linear or it's not linear. <coughs> this one, by the way, is not linear. Second order. You're absolutely right. Okay. And we already did the ones back in example one, so I'm not going to go back and do those again. Okay. Now, a first order ordinary differential equation is sometimes written in differential form, and this is how that looks. M of xy dx it plus n of xy dy is equal to zero. Now one thing that makes this a really, to me, a little ambiguous. Can you tell which is the independent and which is the dependent variable there? I can't because it's written in differential form. It's not written in derivative form. Derivative form, the one on top is the, in, is the dependent variable, the one on the bottom is independent. When it's written in differential form, how do you know which is which? You really don't, okay? So, but this is written in differential form, and you just go from there. Now, when we see these, this will come up in chapter two, on about the middle of chapter two, we will test these to see if they're what we call exact or non-exact differential equations. Don't worry about this now. It's not another way to classify. Right. Not another way to classify. It just is a type of differential equation. And the way we determine that, we take the partial of this with respect to y and take the partial of this with respect to x. Because notice the x and y are variables in these functions. Okay, and but you can't tell which is okay. So you do take partial. That's what we'll be taking partial derivatives, but we won't be doing partial differential equations. Just a little bit of a thing. Don't sweat it. We're not there yet. Okay. Uh, All right. I have, yeah. I have heard of a certain term that's a problem. The degree of Okay. You're talking about this one? Yeah. Okay. This is a second order differential equation. Yeah. But it's a nonlinear because the first derivative is q. Now that if that was raised to the two thirds power, that would not be linear. If it was raised to the negative second power, it wouldn't be linear. The only way it can be linear is every expression of your y, every der derivative or y, is to the first and only the positive one order. That makes it linear. Any other exponent of your y function or your, your, your dependent variable or dependent function uh, 
or any of its derivatives. If they're raised to any power other than one, it's not a member. We haven't gotten there yet, but is that what you were saying or something else? Yeah, well, look at uh, the first term, the second order. Yes, no, second, yeah, second yeah. order, yeah. yeah. Now, the second term is first the order. First order was raised to, to the third, third power. Third. Okay. Yeah, that's a power, this is an order. Yeah. And uh, yeah, that doesn't change its order. But you really, when you're looking at the whole differential equation, we rate it by the maximum derivative. That's what makes the order. Just like we did in polynomials, on the revert, when we talked about a third order polynomial, or let's see, third degree polynomial, that meant the maximum exponent was three, okay? When we're talking about polynomials, okay? And remember, the polynomials, the exponent couldn't be anything other than positive energy. Rational expressions could have negative oh, okay. other things. Radical expressions could have fractional exponents, but polynomials only positive. And then it was the degree of the polynomial would be the maximum exponent. Well, now it's the order of the differential equation is the maximum derivative. Okay, so that would be two. That's still a first derivative there. It's just raised to the third power. That doesn't change its order. Yeah. But we say that equation is not a first and second, it's a second order because the maximum derivative is two. It's <laughs> strange, to say the least. Let's do example two. We've already been doing things like that, so this should be, I hope, not so bad. It's hard to read, but it's not so bad. Uh, if we assume that y is the dependent variable in the first order ordinary differential equation, by the way, ODE, ordinary differential equation, PDE, partial differential equation, okay, ODE, uh, then recall that from calculus that the differential y is defined to be, yeah. Oh, is it? My word, how did that happen? We'll start with example two next time. It you no, have to go I know. I do have to go somewhere, and that's very important for me to get there because it's the first time that class has met. Thank you. So we'll start with example two on uh, I do have Monday. A question. Yeah. With the sin gauge, do you find the sin gauge of the first order equation? Okay, I'll I will do it as soon as I can. I've got okay both courses. Yes. Sir. Okay, I, I've got to get them to give me the code. And it's sometimes they're slow at the first of the term. You can, uh, you can have both of them on there. Yeah. The right. Or right. Okay. Yeah. It just helps me out. Yeah, absolutely. Okay. Uh, I'll try to get in touch with them. I don't have time today because I've got to rush over there. But tomorrow. Yuck. But, but I'm still able to look at the book and do. Yeah. Actually, they should give you a grace period. Something like two or well, three weeks. I had to buy it over the summer, so mine doesn't expire until next month. Or okay, so good. Okay, well, you've still got it. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I, I bought the book online, but the August 26th, the other side of the habit. So is it just, I can just look at any element of differential equations book and pick up what I need Probably. to do right now. Right, yeah, I think so. And this is all, right now, just pretty simple nomenclature. Maybe a little confusing, but it's just simple. It's just how we name the stuff. And uh, we'll do that. All right, let me close this one.